Hey guys, this is Mikit, and I'm just going to do a live attacks uh, recording here. Some people have been requesting some live attacks just to be able to kind of go through some strategy. I figured I would just go through and take my uh, new level 3 paladins for a, a spin, and I'd try it out on Adira's Rest, uh, and just kind of go through this. I have not been through this, so I don't, I'm not exactly sure what I'll run into, but just to give an idea of what we go through on these live attacks. I don't think I quite have a full... Uh, kingdom portal but it should have a few in it I believe all right so let's take a look at what we have here first thing I always do is look at the, the SH level it gives me a, a rough idea of what we're looking at on a, um, on a different levels so all the different things uh, the other thing I like to look at is I like to look at the conduit level if the conduit level is low enough if it's four or below I I can be able to take the scaria and pass over and take that out and it's an easy in and then I don't have to bring uh, as many of the maulers or whatever um, but that, I don't have that in this case uh, taking a look around this is obviously a pretty straight um, not straightforward but a solid base um, and it doesn't have a, an easy in they have this well protected over here uh, level 2 arrow launcher is, it's kind of tough to get to my favorite I'm actually going to probably mostly use the Scaria oops I can't use it I forgot I have to use Aegis I can't use the Scaria I'll use uh, Aegis or um, Possibly Lyris, those are at least leveled up a little bit. Uh, makes it a little more difficult for me, so let's see what we can pull off. But what I'd like to be able to do is, uh, what I prefer to do if I can, is try and get to what you're most scared of. These these sorts of things right there, try and get to those quickly, uh, or possibly if the spell towers are, are problematic. So on this one though, because I'm going to be looking at uh, trying to uh, attack from the far side, um, if, I mean, if I wanted to attack from this side, it's going to be difficult because I have to get through those walls while I'm getting hit the whole time. However, uh, I'm thinking of attacking over here and taking a look at uh, the, trying to put the dragon within snipe ability, which would mean I'd have to get these. One thing that's nice about Aegis is uh, if you take him and you can get rid of, uh, use the, his special abilities, you can get rid of a lot of these things. However, my problem is his mine isn't quite leveled up enough to be able to get to his special abilities very quickly. So I have to see if I can pick off a little bit. So let's give it a try here. This one obviously is easy to pick off. Uh, this one I can probably pick off too, although I'll probably get to take some fire from that. Um, that might be my end though. Nope, I changed my mind. I'm going to go with this. I'm going to change it so I've got... Um, I'm going to go with uh, bringing in archers and then also bring in some paladins and some soldiers. And I'm going to use the archers to just try and uh, bust a hole in there, and then uh, so I'm going to I'm going to aim at this sky watcher there, which then also frees up my Viscaria dragon to come. Now, once again, because we have the kingdom project going here, we have that available. So let's take a a, a try at this. All right, all set. I'm going to go with the archers first, and take those, and they will end up just after this being back up. Now, the first thing I want to do is drop my soldiers down there. Let them take a hit from that first and then drop the paladins down. All these guys. And then I'm going to use the ability here to try and punch through. I missed one of the soldiers. That's a bummer. Okay. Just trying to push through as much as I can. Now these guys are hitting at, at the, um, the SH, but I'm actually going to take them off of that and run them around because I know I can snipe that SH if I need to. Okay, things are looking good. I'm going to be able to, pretty soon, I can use this giant ability. I love this ability because it'll just mow things down as they go through this, especially if you can get another one of these to throw through uh, that bottom spell there. So you can see that it just destroyed this base. <laughs> what I love, it's throwing that on at the end there, and they take down all the walls too. It's pretty cool. So anyways, you can see we just destroyed this base. It was just an SH-9, so not too bad. I didn't even use Viscaria's ability. It just didn't really, wasn't necessary. Okay, so let's do uh, maybe one more. Let's take a look at, uh, I'll make sure I watch my time there. Okay, uh, let's do another one, see what we get here. Now, uh, just for those people who haven't done dailies in a while, 
the dailies were really brutally hard for a while, but they I think they uh, they made them a lot more reasonable, and so now it's reasonable to go about and do them. Sometimes you get some nice uh, things from them, sometimes not. Now this one uh, have the uh, benefit of being able to pick away at the outside, which is really nice for Aegis because, as I said, I don't quite have the the uh, mana up to uh, five at the beginning, so I can't use that. So, but this one's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, I always look for this sort of thing, by the way. Uh, if I've got a bunker out there and I've got these, that is going to be easy pickings for Viscaria to come here or any dragon. Any, just put your dragon right there and pick away at that. You don't even have to worry about the bunker. You get an extra mana for it, and then you get these two. It's going to be easy pickings. Now, the way I like to do, as I said before, I like to attack what I'm scared of most, which it tends to be things around the conduits, um, especially that unless I don't have to deal with them at all, and that's nice. So on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and shape the field such that uh, I'm first going to get the easy mana over there. What I'm going to do is probably bring Viscari up and take that out, and then come in and take that out. Um, and then what I'll probably do is I'm thinking one more pass of Viscari over the top of these over to take out this, and then everything should be able to take these out and go up right up the middle here. You can see it's going to be a nice shape right there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Viscaria. I'm going to make sure I got my right troop combination right now. I don't need my archers, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a mauler instead. Uh, put my mauler, paladins. These are my fa that's my favorite combination, unless it's something I, I can break into the uh, the uh, middle without ha getting shot. Then I don't bring a mauler and bring an extra um, soldier. Okay, so let's give this a shot here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down Viscaria right here. Uh, there's nothing shooting at her, so that makes it nice and easy. Now while she's doing that, I'll explain something too. These uh, town, or excuse me, these um, uh, builder huts out here are something that uh, some of the dragons like Viscaria and Emberclaw can pass over and take them down with a sweep, and that that's a really nice uh, uh, way to be able to do some cleanup. But uh, in this case, it's not needed. I'm just going to kind of speed through this a little bit. So we already talked through what we're going to be doing here. Okay. Then I'm going to do a sweep up to here. I'm just listening for the dragon. Okay. Comes up here and does a sweep. It's going to take some shots. Let's go over the top. One thing is, is uh, that I've noticed that Viscaria and Emberclaw will take some shots as they go over the middle. Um, four, four Veil uh, Dragon doesn't take nearly as many shots because... Uh, Four Veil tends to freeze some of the things that are going to shoot at him if they aren't aimed at him right at the beginning. Okay, this is going to go quickly, so i got to pay attention. Putting this over here. Just going to do a pass over the top here. Won't take much. Take that out. Now, there's only a minute 24 left. As soon as this is about to go, I'm going to throw down everything here. I like to throw down my Maulers first, and that way they can take, take the hits. Then a Soldier with a Paladin, and then a Soldier with a Paladin. And they should go right up the middle if they divert a little bit. Okay, what I'm going to do is throw that down. I didn't even put this guy down. Okay, throw him down. All right, because I have that ability, I'm just going to use it. They're just going to mow everything down here. Okay, I'm going to use this ability, just which is the on-your-feet ability to just kind of get them a little bit. They looked a little low on their health there. And you can see I really didn't need very much time uh, to be able to mow through that base. Aegis can go through a base so quickly. Usually I like to count on about a minute 15 with most things uh, to go through a base. Um, however, um, uh, with Aegis it can go even quicker sometimes. All right. Oh, looks like there's an extra building down here that I got to get. But you can see took out almost all the walls too. So Aegis is, is a lot of fun if you can get to those first abilities. The trick is is if you can get those outside abilities. All right, all right. so uh, basically uh, that's just a, a few examples. I'm going to go on and I'll do the, the next one uh, another time. But it's a few live attacks just to give you an idea of some of the thinking behind uh, how uh, I go about trying to analyze a base. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, this is Mickett with One Kingdom. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and keep ahead of your rivals.